Hello and welcome to my Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. Today we're looking at a brand new couple of cards that are coming out of Blazing Vortex. Uh, just as a quick reminder, please make sure to subscribe and like the video if you enjoy it uh, for further Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Uh, so we've got some kind of evolution of the Eldritch monster. If you remember, there's a, a different monster which has, I think, 2,500 attack. This seems to be a even larger boss monster version. This is El Rey Conquista Eldlick. Um, I, I'm surprised I actually pronounced that okay the first time, to be honest. It's a light attribute zombie fusion effect monster. It's a level 10 with 3,800 attack and 3,500 defense. Um, those are quite unusual stats. Um, you don't really see them that typically. Um, it requires one Eldlick monster and one level 5 or higher zombie monster. And you can only use this card's name's third effect once per turn. This card's name becomes Eldlick the Golden Lord while in the monster zone. Um, the second effect is cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. And the third effect is you contribute one zombie monster, then target one face up monster your opponent controls, take control of it, but it cannot attack or activate its effects until the end of this turn. Generally, from just having a first reaction to it, I think this card is amazing for what it does. Um, you'll get the level 5 or higher zombies really easily. The, I mean, the trap cards activate to treat themselves as those monsters. Um, so you're not having to run anything outside of what is traditionally the archetype. The other thing is a lot of them benefit from actually Elric, um, the Golden Lord, being on the field. So by treating itself by that name, you're having another copy of itself you can essentially run six copies of that card um, traditionally if Eldlick goes to the graveyard and you get rid of all if your opponent gets rid of all copies that means you're left in a very difficult position and are often unable to kind of recover from that so your opponent will just dominate you at that point point. Um, the second effect to be protected from uh, destruction by battle level card effects is really good um, it's kind of a standard build-in for a lot of boss monsters, but, you know, I'm not complaining here. I think it's uh, consistent with a lot of them. Um, of course, you do have general removal, sending cards and this and that, things like evenly matched. I mean, even a push, if you wanted to say something like, I don't know, Lost Wind or something like that, and they, you attack into your opponent's monster and it ends up losing, you know. Uh, in battle, uh, there are ways of getting around that effect, um, but they're just not as easy as, you know, they could be. And I think the third effect is really good for it, and I think it needed to just be a once per turn effect. Um, of course, you're taking control of the monster and it can't attack or activate its effects. It's not really that big of a deal. You can tribute over it, you can link summon, exceed summon, synchro with it. Um, you can just do so much, especially with the introduction of when links came about. It made everything so much easier to um, kind of link them away, which means your opponent isn't getting that card back at the end of the turn. This can be useful against cards which either have some sort of protection similar to uh, this card, such as cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects, um, and also ways of getting around some of your opponent's boss monsters that may not have uh, so many built-in protection cards um, or effects as well. And the other card we have is Seven Realms of the Golden Land. It's a continuous spell card with the effect. You can only use this card's names first and second effects once per turn each. One, during a main phase, you can fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck, using the zombie monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. Two, if a zombie monster is special summoned by a card effect, you can target one set card in the spell and trap zone. It cannot be activated this turn. Okay, so the first effect is generally just like a continuous version of, I don't know, polymerization. Um, because although it has to be the hand or the field, it cannot be and or. It has to be or only. So it's either the, all the hand or all the field. So there's a little bit less flexibility in that respect. Uh, although saying that it, it's a bit of like a cross between fusion gate and polymerization, if you want to argue that way. Mm, it's good because you actually have other fusion monsters, um, which are zombies as well. Um, so 
you don't have to just go with that card. You can go with some others. Uh, the second effect um, I think is really good as well. Um, I consider it a little bit like, oh, there's the Trickster Light, Trickstar Light stage um, has a similar effect, which it kind of shuts down a set card. Uh, the difference is that this doesn't actually send it to the graveyard at the end of the turn. But if you're going to be special summoning, you know, zombie type monsters, you're going to be doing that quite a lot with um, with this style of deck. Uh, which means potentially, you know, I know you're only going to be able to shut down one card. Um, if it could be activated multiple times, that'd be a bit too too much for it. So it provided there's a bit of a balance to it. But even if you're just blank, uh, shutting down one card, it might be that key card that your opponent has, which would normally out your deck. Overall, I think the two cards are brilliant for the archetype and actually make it a lot more powerful. Um, I think a lot of people are going to be quite scared of it going into the future because um, I've seen a lot of Elvic uh, players and how they play, so um, this is only going to make that deck much that much stronger. Whatever you think, uh, leave your comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and don't forget to subscribe for more daily Yu-Gi-Oh content.